Okay guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Travel with Flex. So today guys, this video I'm doing is all about Austria and every process that is needed to carry out in respect to studying or relocating to Austria using the yeah, using study route. Now, I've done a lot of videos step by step on how to study in Austria, but a lot of people kept asking questions. But in this video, I'm going to do every breakdown from beginning to the end, starting from Ministry of Education, Foreign Affairs, um, how to get an eligibility letter, um, how to legalize that the um, embassy out, the verification process. I'm going to talk about that, how to apply for your school, the school, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and mistakes people have made, how to apply for your visa, how to um, for your RP, how to apply for your D visa. That is a visa D. The applying for RP is different from applying for visa D. So these are two different board games in that area. So I've been breaking down a lot of stuff. So it's gonna be a long ride right now. It's gonna be a long ride because a lot of people have asked me a question. I feel like is it I've not done justice to the videos, the previous videos I've been doing before. I'm kind of confused. And some people ask questions like I don't know, maybe some people don't watch the video or what, but please, if you watch the video finish it, somebody that was asking question, um, one of the video asking question on the comment section. And I I did talk about that thing. I talk about that particular stuff. And the person that actually finished watching the video, you just watched most some of the video and you just cut off along the way. I came to ask question now. Now like, but you didn't watch the video. You didn't complete it because if you had completed the video, I'm sure you wouldn't have to ask the question. I had to tell the person, please go back and watch the video. Then you watched it and was like, oh yeah, you talked about it. So let's go straight to it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. See the subscribe button. It's reading with your right uh, white on the red button, then the like, when you let it, uh, give the thumbs up, you like the video, the algorithm pro uh, promote the video. And when you comment, if you comment, it still helps to promote the video a lot. So don't forget to do that. So let's go straight to it. Yeah, get a bottle of water, okay? Get a wine. Because if you use pure water, if you use pure water, the water feel poor for the book, you want to spray something now. So I don't make that happen. Use bottle of water, just keep them. Maybe, maybe chew one. If could they put out water, <laughs> and if now, why you want to Because it's a long ride right now. Let's go straight to it, guys. So, Austria, everybody, she let me just tell, tell you a little about Austria. Austria is a first world country, that's number one. So, it's advanced when it comes to minimum wage. It's a very like their minimum wage is high. That's one thing you should understand is high, and their tuition fee there is very low. And again, if you're traveling there as a family, family man. Family is accepted in Austria. It's just that there are some other process attached to it. You understand? Family too is accepted, but you, your family is not. Um, one thing with Austria is that your family can't go to you immediately. The applicant has to be there maybe like five to six months ahead of the family. So that is why some people don't. But family can, you can go with your family and some are lucky. They move together. If it's the political and wife, if it's only the husband and wife, no child, children yet. So we can move at the same time. When children is attached, you know, the embassy have to do what they need to do. So, but that's just it. Austria is a very nice place. One of the best in Europe right now. I want to move to cheap tuition fee from around 320 to 700 per semester. In a year, you only spend 1,000 something. They're about to see how cheap it is and how easy to go about it. And the main thing is that Austria has 98% visa approval. 98% visa approval. Because the verification process you are passing through is enough. I'm telling you, it's enough. So let's get straight, straight to it. I don't want it to be too long. I want to be fast with it. And I want to give full details. So now let's go to straight to it. The first step to apply for, uh, uh, to start with our Austria application is this. Don't have anybody to tell you, go and apply for admission first. See, the last slide is good. You will still end up to differ if your documents are not legalized. So now let's start with it. Where do you need to go first? Where do you need to go first? So I'll try to list, um, the document that needed for masters and the document that needed for BSc. So when you have this document, they'll tell you what needs to do. Now for masters, um, students, if you are going for your, your masters, these are the documents you need. You need your transcript, BSc certificate. You need your WAHEC or NECO, any one of them. Eligibility letter. When you go to Ministry of Education, eligibility letter will be issued to you from there. Yeah. Um, you need your declaration of age. Now, let me talk about that declaration. A declaration of age and attestation. Declaration of age, note this, please. Go to the high court in, in your state. Go to the high court. Tell them you need declaration of age. Now, note something. The declaration of age, the declarance must be your mom or your dad or your sister. Maybe your senior brother or your junior sister, any of them. 
must be the declarant. Their name must be there. Your name to be there. But their signature must be that uh, that is there, not your own. Because they are the, the declarant. It's just that are doing this for you. You two are there. Your name to be there, but the declarant is there. So you have to go with them because when you have to go with them, it shouldn't be your signatures. That the lawyer, the embassy you are looking to come and find out about all your documents. We'll go there and come to your house and meet with anybody that do that signature and tell him to resign. So if the six signature is the discrepancy between the two of them. Then the two hundred k you pay is, is is useless. You start again all over. So please note that area. So when you get the declaration of age, use that declaration of age to go and get attestation as National Population Commission. As long as you are age eighteen up, uh, is is it age eighteen year above, you get attestation. Not that green paper or that small paper. You get the bigger one that looks like um like creamy color like that. That's one you're going to get. Are you getting international population commission? So once you go down one, you are good to go. Then marriage certificate or bachelorhood. If you are married, you need your marriage certificate. And the bachelorhood is not necessary, it's optional. But if you feel like you want to go to Australia and you go to get married to one of your citizens, they definitely need marriage certificate because they want to they want to confirm you are single. So it means if your own country are very declare you single, then they are going to believe that because you need to legalize that also. So once you have this for Masters, you are good to go for uh, for uh, BSc. Just get your WAEC, get your testimonial, get your bachelorhood optional. I've, I've talked about WAEC. Then eligibility letter too can be gotten from your uh, what are they calling it? Eligibility letter can be gotten from your uh, 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 from Ministry of Education. And please for master students, master students, your transcript. You know that it's not every school that issued students original transcript. So if your school is not issuing you original transcript, tell them to send it directly to your school. But if your uh, school, uh, sorry, uh, the school should send it directly to Ministry of Education. But if your school give you the original transcript, you are good to go because the original is the transcript that the Ministry of Education will use to generate that eligibility letter for you. Without the transcript, you can't get eligibility letter. Same thing as um, as BSc student people that are applying for BSc is your WAEC. They will use or your NECO original one. Let your document be original. No go for anything or else you will hear around your, your money don't go and you don't need, you don't need to print your name black. You understand? So we will put your name for blacklist. Good. So those are the documents for BSc and um for master student. BSc don't need any stress, no much documents like that. Those are the basic um documents. You also need declaration of age. As I said, your WAEC, your NECO, your WAEC or NECO your uh, declaration of age and attestation, your testimonial, your international passport, international passport for master's and, and BSc student. These two things are needed. So once you've gotten all these documents ready, then you can now move ahead to Ministry of Education. Now, let me make you understand something. Ministry of Education, now, this is it. Ministry of Education, you have to pay for every document you're uploading. Hope you understand but when you get to the office that they're going to do signature you know based on some nigerian factors they won't collect some things but if you can stay and endure the stress and everything you can do it yourself and it's free but if you want to follow sharp sharp method like one run on isap you know that way it is so it's all up to you so once you get to ministry of education present your document after you've uploaded it, you have to upload it online when you get ministry of education there's a shop in front of the place give them that to upload it pay them and tell you how much they are going to do it for each of them. Then pack the document once it has been uploaded and appointment has been booked for it. There's a way they do it. They want to get there. It's not going to be an issue. Then they'll direct you to the minute uh, to, to, to the office where you're going to complete the other process. And when you are done with the process, now you now take that document to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They are close to each other. As they look foreign affairs, they look Ministry of Education. But if you don't want to follow all this process, all this stress, people that are from other states and other stuff like that. You can make use of agents. You can contact me. I can do it for you. That won't be an issue. I have, I have every connect to do all those things. So it won't be an issue for you, but you have to pay for it. So just know that because it's a service that uh, uh, the process is going to take and it's not going to be an easy task. That's just it. Because most of the times, if I go to Abuja, I go to Abuja because of people that want to go and process their documents. So I'm not actually stable there. So that's that for that. But if you want to do it yourself, that's just the basic process. So if you are done with Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Education, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, basically, most of, almost all the documents you took from Ministry of Education is what is still going to go to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Almost everything. Are you getting it? Almost everything. So don't get it twisted. So now, once you are done with Ministry of Education and Foreign Affairs, make sure everything signature on your eligibility letter or on your date of birth or everything are original. Don't allow them to do you. 
because the a lawyer is coming back there. So now when you are done there, make sure you've already booked an appointment with the embassy. Now em appointment right now is hard, but you can still hit me up. You can find a you know solutions to that for you. But right now to get appointment or the portal is very hard. So just hit me up if you want me to help you out with one or two in respect to that appointment because a lot of people are having issues in that area and like no appointment i won't do i need to do fast just hit me up i'm not good talk here so that's just that for that equipment it's me for number I would, if you want if you need my contact i'll drop my phone number so once you've booked the appointment already now you take all those documents take it for verification you're going to go to the embassy with two hundred thousand naira. now you're going to take it for verification now that two hundred thousand is not for and legalization no, that is just for verification so now once you go to the embassy you take all those documents your international passport there's a questionnaire that you are going to be given also um you you you, um, you download it from the embassy website you are not going to submit that questionnaire you fill it up with every correct information take along your passport and every other document you've worked or you've done authenticated the ministry of education and foreign affairs Take it to the um to the embassy. They they request for some things. They will look it by themselves. Anyone that is not needed, they will return it back to you. So you submit it. After you submit the mission of education, it's going to take within eight to twelve weeks, which is two to three months, for them to process it. Now the lawyer is going to go back to your school. Everything you submit is going to go back and verify if it's original or not. Then he's going to come to your house. And before you come to your house, he will call you to tell the person that's coming to his house. If it's your mom or your dad that is coming, let them know. And when he comes, he's going to do a lot of interview. You understand? Uh, please note something. Nobody offered the lawyer. Will you take drinks? No, it's against the this thing. So don't don't do that. If you request that, okay, I need the water. That is a different thing. But don't give an offer yet. You understand? So note that. So once you're done, and the lawyer, make... so when the when the lawyer have confirmed all those documents, I've done everything. With those documents and confirm and see the authenticity of these documents. Then you not get back to Ministry of Education if it's negative or positive. Anyone, the embassy will get back to you by email that okay, this is the info about this document you have um um the uh you submitted. This is what the lawyer found out. If it's negative, then they will tell you and tell you the document you have an issue with. Then you have to pay under two hundred thousand for it. That's Nigeria is two hundred thousand for but for other um countries like Cameroon and Ghana, I guess it should be around three hundred there about. Yeah. Then, but for Nigeria is 200, so you have to repay that. So, to avoid that, make sure all your documents are original and you didn't mix up. Don't do any fake thing. Follow the process, and everything will be all right. You will start seeing uh, this that data, data, best of you to have issue. A lot of people have to have issue. Tell, I tell you, let one of your family member to be the one to do that, that stuff. Then, once you are done with that and it came out positive, then they will tell you to come and legalize. Now, all the documents you take there is not by force you legalize all those documents. Now, those documents your school is requesting for. It should be the one you are going to legalize, not all the old documents. Like at least your transcripts, um, your BSc certificate, your YEC. No, YEC might not be needed. Um, your uh, your eligibility letter, your declaration of age. That is the attestation. Like at least five to six documents. Let's say five at least or six documents will be legalized. So just look at documents your school needed, the major ones. Take them out, and the declaration of age. And when you even get to the embassy, they will tell you the one they even need. Even declaration of age, that one is certain. The eligibility letter is certain. Your um, BS certificate or transcripts is certain. So just know that. So at least prepare money for that. And it's 80, it's 80 euro per document. And now we money don't they increase. So if you want to do this process, do it soon now that it's still cheap. Because you know, it was very it was very cheap. Because now an um, exchange rate is times two already. So if you know how much you're gonna you're gonna pay, you might pay 39 to 40 something. Now you have to pay almost 80. 80 plus per document, so you should know how much you're paying. So please be fast with that. So once you're done with that area, your document has been legalized within one to two weeks. Sometime within one week, everything will be done at most two weeks. And once it has been legalized, now you have to apply for your school. Now let me let me, let, let nobody deceive you that oh the, oh yeah, there are schools that will give you admission without legalized document. They might give you, but let me tell you, there's a disadvantage there. Because they might tell you after two or three months, you should submit. What of if the document is not out? They will take the admission back. And one thing is that some schools that don't even request for it again. It's a necessity. You can't apply for visa because it's, the way it's a requirement to some school for you to legalize the document is a requirement for the embassy. If your no, document is not legalized and you get admission and you get everything necessary, as long as your document is not legalized, embassy will not, leg, uh, will not give you issue visa or RP or whatever. It's a necessity for them as long as you're using the study route. Even though you put family, uh, wife and husband you have to do it 
So you see it now. So even though you get admission without legalized documents, you can't apply for a visa. It's a necessity for the this thing. So that is why it's always good to start from there. Then you cannot apply. Some schools are starting next month now. Next yeah, next month. Yeah, there are some schools already started. Some are starting next month, September, October. So you should note that. So that is one thing with applying for schools. And once your document is legalized and is you have good grade, HND too, some HND I'm not be talking about them. HND, you can apply, but you will only be giving BSc. They will be giving BSc. And even BSc self, they've, they've, they've made some changes again. If you are not up to uh, your, your, uh, your semester is not up to six, like it's not up to five years, right? They're, they're not even considering some because they said it's not reaching. Some of the schools are saying it's not up to their standard, blah, blah, blah. So if you have HND, it's BSc that are going to give you. Just know that. Just know that. So just get your transcript too and do the same thing like master student. Get your transcript, you, you know. So once you're done with that process and have gotten admission, some schools will tell you to send your legalized document through, maybe maybe scan it and upload it on their email or something on their portal. Some will say you should send it down. Let me promise you, it's safe. Don't think that ah, my document will lose. Any risk is based on them, but everything is safe. I've not seen somebody that said, ah, my document got missing. As long as you follow the address, you are good to go. You can use DHL, uh, UPS, or any other this thing. And send your documents, and you are good to go. Just search for it. And notice this, is not all schools that use that do, uh, English, uh, that do English, that's, uh, that teach in English. So you have to check the schools, which English course they are, which one is close to the course you do. Don't go to do food and nutrition, they want job enter engineering with that course. It's not possible. How? Oh. So please, you to be fair, look at the course very well, analyze, then you pick and apply. Then it makes it more easier for you. So don't want to try play conny conny games. Go straight to the point. That is just it. Go straight to the point and you are good to go. So some schools, yeah, they do admission twice. Some is once and some within two to three months, some within weeks, they are going to get back to you that your admission is out, you know, it depends on the school. So just read the do and don't of the school. Read their rules, you go to their websites, read it, how to apply. And if you don't know how to apply, I want me to help you out, it's still based on service level. You can just eat me up and we'll talk about it. I'll give you my phone number on the comment section. Now, when it comes to visa, visa applying for RP, once you've got your admission, the next thing for you to do is apply for your RP. Now, RP depends on the city. Some is it is within two to three months. Some within two weeks uh, they to uh, approve their own. Yeah, I hope you understand. They to approve it. So now RP is different from Visa D. So let me start with RP. Now, which are the document document that are needed for RP application? You need your school um your school uh admission letter. The admission letter you have. That is number one. You need police character. Maybe two weeks to your admission. That is when you need your police character. You can go and do your police character. Because it's only valid for three months. So once you do it, go and like, uh, take it to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They should do the annual signing. Then you can submit together with your IP application. Hope you understand. That one is not stressful. So your police character can do it at your state CID in any state you are. Your, okay, let's start. Police character number one. Questionnaire like the answer of the form you are going to fill for the visa. Yeah. Because you have to book appointment for that too. So just email the Abuja embassy that you need appointment, a date for this application. I need to give you a fair date. You can tell them at this, um, when I'm going to resume and other stuff, they might consider and give you close that date. So just have your police character, questionnaire, have your bank statement. Bank statement is very, very important. I don't want to start talking a lot about bank statement again. Bank statement right now, you need at least 13,000 euros there about for single. 13,000 euros. Now convert to Nigeria exchange rates and please always add at least enough money, like two to three million naira extra, please. Because a lot of people they're rejecting the application. It's not that rejecting the application, they will tell them to add more money. So put enough. Me, I put enough when I did mine. So put enough, add more extra. Bank statements, uh, admission letter from your school, payment receipts that you've paid the um tuition fee. That is needed. I paid the tuition fee, excuse. I paid the tuition fee. Yeah, that is needed. Yeah, the, the receipt, your school should issue that one. Travel insurance. The travel insurance should start from the day that you be traveling. You understand? Maybe your a day to or maybe your, your school is starting this August or in September. It should start from at least maybe middle of August. You understand? Not from the day you are submitting the application for visa. Maybe you start from then. And just if you want to do it well, just do one year. 
you can start from the date you want to do your application for visa to the other year. You know, you can there are different types of um travel insurance uh company. You understand? So I'll drop it at the um description box, you check it out there. Then that is that travel insurance, you need international passport, that one is a necessity. Valid one, not the one will so expire in the next one month, please. At least at least six months. Then you need your legalized documents, as I said earlier on. Then you need your okay. I'm talking about our travel insurance. So these are the documents that are needed. Then if you submit all these documents, you do thumbprints. When you, once you do your thumbprint and every other thing, stuff like that. Before they used to do interview, but now no interview, just submit documents, do thumbprints. Once you do thumbprint, then you leave. Once you leave, once it's positive or negative, just keep waiting, check your email time to time. If it's positive or negative, they are going to get back to you. And if it's positive, you then you go and apply for your D visa. They, are, they will tell you that your own, own um, embassy will call you, they will email you. I want you to apply for D visa now. It's just valid for three months. It's when you not get to Austria, any city you are, that's where you go and get your original card that is that will last for one year. So these are the documents for visa D. Which is the visa or visa D, but they put it on their own visa D. You have you need your travel insurance, as I said earlier on, you can do one year. You understand? Travel insurance, flight reservation, flight reservation. Then also there's a form that will be given to you. You can they will send it to you in your email. After that's when you get your a positive answer from your IP application, then your international passport. Because now on top of the international passport, they will put the Visa D, this thing, they will pay the team because now for three months. So, these are the things that are needed. So, I think I've covered almost all the questions you want to answer. We want to ask or stuff like that. If you know you are finding issues to come and do the authentication or legalization, just hit me up. And for the bank statement, bank statement doesn't mean um, you have to have put the three uh, the money for the past three months. No. Even if it's a week or two weeks to when you want to do interview, you can put the money there. But let the transaction for the past three months or six months show there. Yeah, let it show. You understand? Then your money is complete. And make sure you have a backup of source of fund. How you take get the money? If not sponsor, make the sponsor give you your know, bank statement showing that oh yeah, see the money because it must show like the correlate must correlate that yeah the money came from you to you and give you a sponsor letter that is one sponsoring you and other stuff. But the money have to be in your account. Note that. So if you are using a sponsor, make sure you have a necessary documents that are needed, like sponsor letter. And if it's you and you, you want to tell you are self-employed or you, you are not sponsoring yourself, they have to know how you do your business. Are you the one getting the money? Like where do you get the money? Are you doing business? If you are doing business, you have to produce um a maybe a CC certificate or something showing that you are doing business. So you are good to go. So basically, these are the things, info that you need to apply for Austria school. And before you know, you're on your way. So please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell.